Okay, so in this video, we're going to cover the SharePoint content types. And what we're going to cover, we're going to talk about what are content types. We're going to break it down as far as, far as what are content types, how do you fuse them together, when you want to apply them to document libraries and lists. And then we want to actually go through a demo of creating them at the various levels. You can create content types at the site collection level, at the site level, and where you create them, uh, they definitely will have different impacts. Then we're going to talk about the four gotchas, right? Uh, depending on uh, different updates and how you update things and how uh, site content owners or site owners uh, manage them, especially if you're establishing content types at the site collection level or the site level, and there are many subsites, uh, there are definitely some gotchas that you should be aware of uh, as far as when you uh, get through the update process. And then to avoid those gotchas, you know, in addition to that, we'll cover the seven, what we, I would call the seven best practices that should be followed uh, when you want to start implementing content types at a company level, at a division level, department level, or whatever the case may be. So, okay, let's go ahead and get started with some demos. So content types are uh, really schemas that, that you use to control a document or a list item, and you can group uh, like site columns. You can also use it to um, trigger a workflow. And content types, uh, I'm, he I'm here at the root site collection. You can come here under site settings, uh, content types. You can create them at the root site collection. Anything that you create here at the uh, site collection level will be available for any subsite created underneath this site. Uh, you can also go to a particular subsite within a site collection and then create um, the content type there. So now under uh, the SharePoint Ninja site, which is a site we've been working on, and then if I go to site settings under the subsite, I have a content type section here. I can create them as well as get reference to other content types created at the uh, site collection level and leverage those as well. So when you when I create a content type here at the subsite level, it will only be available for this particular subsite and all of its children. Uh, it will not be available to subsites that are uh, at the same level. Um, so um, colleagues are a brother and sister, for example, uh, and they would not be available. If I create the sub content type at the subsite level, they would not be available at the uh, parent level. Um, so you can create at different levels and it, you know where you create them is where they will be available. Now, why would you use content types? So if you go to a document library, here's my default document library for the SharePoint Ninja site. And by default, uh, content types are not enabled. Uh, you are given for every library or list are created, you're given a out of the box content type for that particular list or library. And, and the content type depends on the type of list or library you create. So for like a photo gallery, for example, we have a photos content type. A document library will have a document content type. A task list has a out-of-the-box task content type. And um, so those are there, but they're hidden by default. Now, in order to show these, you have to click on the advanced setting and then say allow management of content types. And if you have content types associated to this one, uh, to your library, uh, they will appear uh, in this list here. So normally, so you see the Ninja document. That's the one I've been playing around with, uh, prepping for this course. Um, so this was there. It was sitting. Uh, as, it was available. It was dormant. Uh, but the document one is the one that you may see uh, out with, out of the box because this is going to be the default content type for each and every um, document library. So. Um, as you can see here, you can have multiple content types uh, within the same document library. Uh, and from a user perspective, when they le try to leverage these and they click on new, you will see the various options of the content types appear here. And you see that, you know, you can create a folder and here in the new modern UI, you can create a link, uh, which is actually a really cool feature. So we'll touch on that um, in, in, a next, in another course. But, you, but as far as the content types that you create, the user would then be presented with the different options of content types to create their document. Now, if they just click on new, okay, so this one's going to force me. But if you do a, a buck upload, for example, um, one of these content types, if you have multiple, only one content type will be used as the default and apply to uh, those documents as you upload in batches. And how you control that is that when you go to library settings, and you go down to the content type section, 
you will see which one of the content types in the list are available as the default content type. And then here you can go and change new button order. Here you can configure these. You can say, hey, I want to make Ninja document number one. This will become the default. Or you can also come in here and say, hey, I have multiple, but I do not want my users to be creating uh, documents associated to the document content type. I only want Ninja to be available. So now from a user perspective, when they come in here, um, and they go and click new, they only have one option and they do buck upload and only the Ninja document will be available for content type uh, association. Now, content types are really good. Uh, you know, they, they're, as far as information architecture, that's where they really are defined, uh, especially if you have an architect come in um, and really define them from the enterprise level. But if you're a power user or if you're managing like a particular site collection, say, for example, you're part of your enterprise, you're given a site collection to manage for your department or your team or your division, and you want to uh, create a standard uh, for that, you can come in here and start creating content types at that site collection level and then communicate out to all your site owners and uh, content contributors uh, as far as, you know, how to use the content types, what are available, what are the standards and all this other good stuff. So we're gonna walk through, in the next video, we're gonna actually walk through the process of creating a uh, content type and associated to the library. Uh, from a development standpoint, what we normally do for a development team, uh, because our team is comprised of developers, architects, testers, um, as well as a user acceptance, uh, business users or SMEs, uh, what we would normally do is that for any particular uh, library, especially across projects, uh, we will have uh, different content types for the different types of documents that we will upload. So, so, for example, the technical design document, there will be a content type here. It's called technical design. Um, and then, you know, it's, it, the same is true for requirements document and QA uh, test cases or whatever the case may be. And basically what that would do, that allow us a couple of things. One, uh, for the development or technical documents, we can specify which columns that one every technical document should have and then we could make certain columns required that says um, these types of information or these type this type of metadata needs to be specified for those types of documents um, is in the, in the second piece to another good way to leverage content types is that you can type the document uh, meaning that like in search now uh, say for example what do, what do we call this one uh, ninja document in search, I can come up here and say content type, and this is all out of the box, equal to, and I'm going to put this in quotes because my content type has a space in it, ninja document. And basically, content type equals ninja document. How come that's not working? Do I not have, let me just try document. I'm sure I have content types associated to Ninja document, right? All right, so this is the one is document. Let me go back. How come Ninja document did not work? Uh, maybe I do not have one associated to it. But anyway, so uh, we'll go into detail. So if you have a content type uh, associated to Ninja document, uh, I'm going to save this one off. And here, you know, you can see it's associated now, uh, but I have to wait until the uh, search uh, index gets updated with this change. And then if I execute that query, and basically all it is, the query is content type, no space, right? It's not case sensitive. I have to put it in quotes only because my content type name has a space in it, right? And then I have to execute this search. And once the, the index gets updated, any any document associated to Ninja doc, uh, content type will appear. And right now, I'm only searching this uh, within the SharePoint Ninjas. But if this was my uh, content type for the site collection, I can say search everything. Right? I can change the scope of this to everything and then execute the search. And then regardless of what subsite um, the document lives for, you know, within a, a library, or, you know, how many of those across, you know, depending on what the scope is for this search result or result source, it would pick up those findings, which is very, very uh, nifty tool. And then you can really leverage search to 
uh, the fine documents and you can set up refiners and all this other good stuff. So that's another video that we're going to get into when we uh, actually talk about search and how to leverage a lot of the out-of-the-box features. But for right now, those are the uh, the baselines of why you would use content types. Uh, in the next video, we're going to actually go ahead and uh, go through the process of creating them and configuring them. Uh, and then as well as uh, why you would use them to update them, especially if you have multiple libraries and lists throughout the site, uh, your tenant, your, your farm or your site collection, and you want to start adding additional columns, uh, you can really start to see the power of why you want to use the content type. For now, I'll see you in the next video.